If you have your Bibles, would you please open them to Jonah chapter 4 as we continue our study through this wonderful book of the Old Testament. Jonah chapter 4, you can get your phones out and make sure you click on to that. I'll be reading from the ESV uh, this morning. Um, We're going to look at the first four verses of chapter 4. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed this series as we walk through it. I know when Pastor David preached uh, a few weeks ago, um, somebody made the comment, how can you make a sermon out of just one verse? And Pastor David did an excellent job of that. And uh, this book is just so rich in, 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 in how it applies. And I don't know for you, but as I've studied and worked through this book, I see me. Uh, I see me in it. There's so much of me that I am so much like Jonah. And I don't want to admit it. I fight it. I don't like it. But I'm so much like him. And, uh, and, and a lot of people know Jonah, the story of Jonah. And uh, especially the first three chapters um, of, hey, here's this guy who God called to go to this land. And he ran away from God or tried to run away from God. And a big fish swallowed him. And, uh, and then he was in there for three days, and then the fish spit him out, and then he went and told the people, and the people repented and turned to God. And a lot of people stop right there. Well, chapter 4 is, is critical as we process through um, not only what Jonah's response was at that time, but it kind of gives us a picture a little bit of what's been going on behind the scenes in Jonah's heart. And so that's what we want to look today in chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. So if you have your Bibles, uh, whether it's a hard copy or on your electronic, would you follow along with me? It's also up on the screen. Uh, Jonah chapter 4, and we're going to look at the, we're going to read the first four verses. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was angry. Now let's pause there for a minute before I keep going, because I only have four, three more verses. Uh, why was Jonah exceedingly angry? Um, Displeased. Well, it's because the last few verses of chapter 3, all right, and it's uh, God saw what the Ninevites had done, verse 10, and how they turned from their evil way. God relented of the disaster that he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. And that chapter 4, verse 1, but, but it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was angry. Let's continue, verse 2, and he prayed to the Lord. And said, O Lord, is not this what I said when I was yet in my country? This is why I made haste to flee from Tarshish, or to Tarshish, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relenting from disaster. Therefore now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Do you do well? to be angry. Would you pray with me? Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for this opportunity and time to spend in it. We do pray, Lord, that your spirit would open our hearts and open our minds, that we may see you, that we may catch a glimpse of you and your awesomeness and your splendor and your holiness. And yet, Lord, you love us and may we see that May today not be us gaining more head knowledge, but, Lord, understanding you more, seeing you better, but that it would penetrate to our core of our heart, of who we are, of our being. And may that change the way we live today and going forward. Lord, we know that can't happen on our own. We need you to come and work in us. So, Lord, I pray that your power would be mighty today in our midst work in us. May we allow you that freedom to stir within our minds and in our hearts. Draw us closer to you, Lord. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we see this great thing in chapter 3, right? God does a great work. Here's the Ninevites. They all come together, uh, all right? They are by barbarians. I've said this uh, week after week. These are people that are just cruel, mean people, all right? It would be people who we would kind of look at today and who are those people for us as a nation, nation of uh, the United States of America, we look at uh, like the Taliban, all right, it would be like looking at them, it would be those who we kind of classify in that that same realm as terrorists, all right, the Assyrians were 
not people you wanted to see in an alley, okay? They were mean, they were barbaric, they were not kind, they flexed their muscles and they did whatever they wanted to do. And so Jonah was called to minister to them when we see in chapter 3 as Jonah goes and shares the message that God has for them. These are people who uh, something uh, out of the ordinary took place. And it can only be described as God doing the work in them. God did a work in the city of Nineveh. And so these people turned to God. They repented. How long that lasted? Not very long. All right, and that's kind of besides the story. Sometimes we got to get, we get, we get, but pastor, uh, you know, we know that the Assyrians, they came and they went after Israel later, just like 20 years down the road. And then they tried to take Jerusalem a few years after that, 40 years after that. True. I don't know what to say. All I know is that the Bible says that they repented. Have you ever repented and turned from something and then gone your own way a little bit later? Anybody willing to admit that? All right. Uh, I got yelled at a lot as a kid. And I would say, I was, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And the worst was the cookie jar. Because mom and dad switched. Uh, I have two, two brothers, one older and one younger. They switched very early on in my younger years. And I remember this. They moved from a Tupperware cookie jar to a glass cookie jar. When I became a parent, I realized why they did that. It's because you can hear the glass when it goes, all right? And so every time we did it, man, we tried to do as quiet as we could. Usually I had my little brother doing it um, so that he would get caught, all right? I, did, I didn't open the cookie jar. That Dan did that. And, uh, but how many times do you get in trouble and you're sorry for it, but then... You know, an hour or the next day, there you are again, getting caught with your hand in the cookie jar. All right? So let us be careful as we are casting judgment upon others. Um, look, at, look at the big plank in our own eye. All right? As we look at the speck in others. So be careful. Be mindful of that. I think it's good to look at the history. Look at see how the Assyrians did respond. Ultimately, while they did repent and turn to God here... Um, I don't know that God became their only God, and that was the issue, okay? And that's the distinctness of Israel and how God was working in Israel and how he would even use other nations to show them that they were his nation and that he was to be alone their God. And for us today, I think that is the same challenge for us. Uh, we are prone to have many gods. Say, no, I only believe in one God. Well, next week you come back and we're going to look at that part a little bit deeper and how we lose perspective and how often something becomes a God that we, we, we miss and we fail to see it. But here we see um, uh, Jonah and, and the Hebrew text, uh, moving from the Hebrew to the English, we miss this a little bit. So let me translate that first part, while it says in English, but it displeased Jonah exceedingly, let me share with you, this is what really it says. It was essentially evil to Jonah. What Jonah thought God had done, the Hebrew describes as evil. It wasn't that Jonah was just upset and mad. He saw it as evil. He was angry, the text says. He was, quote, hot. Because here was God, and he describes then the character of God. So he's angry, so angry, thinking it's evil, so he prays and talks to God. It's interesting when you start looking at when Jonah prays. Again, we looked at chapter 1 and 2. And how chapter 3 and 4 go sim so similarly together. We don't see Jonah asking God for help in chapter 3. We don't see Jonah asking God for help in chapter 1. But in chapter 2, when Jonah's in the belly of the fish, he finally cry cries out. 
when Jonah is overwhelmed with this, with this anger, he finally cries out to God. And this is what he says. He prayed to the Lord, and he said, O oh Lord, is not this what I said when I was yet in my country? Essentially, this is what he's saying. God, I told you this was going to happen before I ran away. I told you this was what was going to happen before I ran away. I told you this. And then he goes on. He says this. That is why I made haste to flee to Tarshish. He's, he's saying, I told you this, and that's why I ran away. Because I knew you were like this. And so he describes God's character in the next part of this. I knew you, that you are a gracious God. You're merciful. You're slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relenting from disaster. I don't know if you picked it up, but Jonah actually is quoting scripture here. There's a few times that we see different characters in the Bible that quote scripture. One very, um, that stands out to me, um, and read it this last week in my own personal time with the Lord, uh, and that's in Matthew, when Satan comes and quotes scripture to Jesus when he's tempting him. Here, Jonah is, he's quoting scripture. He is actually quoting, and you could put a little note there in your Bible, from Exodus 34, verses 6 and 7. It's almost word to word, except he leaves something out. He forgets that God also says to Moses in Exodus uh, 34 in verse 7 that, that there is judgment coming. There, are, there is judgment for those who do not look to him. Jonah doesn't, doesn't want to think of that. All he, all he is doing is focused on one thing, and that's all he has in his mind. He left out that God will judge. He sees God working, and he knows God's character here. He says, I know that you are gracious. And if you want to put a Psalm, Psalm 119, uh, verse 68 is a great verse that goes along with the, who God is and his, how, how he is good all the time. It comes from that saying, God is good all the time, all the time God is good. Psalm 119, verse 68. Psalm 46, 1, merciful, that God is merciful, that he's slow to anger. Nahum 1, verse 3, or Psalm 78, verse 38. He is abounding in steadfast love, and he's relenting from disaster. What we see here is resentment. And it's the same picture that we see when Jesus is sharing in a parable uh, about the prodigal son. And while we saw in chapter 1 and 2 the prodigal in Jonah, we now see in chapter 3 and 4 Jonah as the older brother who has been filled with resentment. He can't believe that the Ninevites repented. He can't believe that God would show to them, those people, mercy and grace. And he resents his call and God's hand on his own life. Which begs me to ask myself, am I complaining? In your bulletin, um, there is a tear-off tab. If you would grab that and look at that with me. I had somebody come up to me and said, hey, I, I don't like or uh, they said, I, I have a question about tab number two there. And, and I want to go over that with you. Okay, the first tab, my next step today uh, is to A, memorize the first one there, memorize the verse of the month, Psalm 16, verse 11, which is the top of your bulletin. The second one is, today I realize that I want God to work on my terms and according to what I think is correct action. Um. My kids always tease me in different ways and different things. And they're like, Dad, the first solution is to admit, to just admit it. You're in denial. Well, that's what this tab is here. Um, Jonah is not 
as not admitting to where his heart is. See, there's a disconnect between what Jonah knows. He knows that this is who God is, that God is a God of mercy, that God is a God of grace, that he is willing and able to forgive and to relent of disaster. He knows that in his mind, but in his heart, he's angry. He's mad. Theology helps us to live correctly, but we can't just know theology. We can't just know about who God is. To know who God is and how he works is critical to making sure that we trust him and follow him well. But you have to make that connection between the head and the heart. And the first part of that is understanding what I put here. Today I realize that I want God to work on my terms and what I want and what I want to see happen, the actions that I want. Let me tell you, God is no respecter of persons. He loves you and he cares for you, but his plan is his plan. The scriptures tell us that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. He is higher and mightier than who we are. And I don't know about you, at times I get so selfish and conceited that it's hard to see that. But when I can take a step back, I am so thankful that God is so big that it doesn't depend on me and what I think. That he knows a better plan, that his plan is great and it's mighty and it's wonderful. And even when I get upset that it doesn't go my way, I can still trust him. And I can still walk with him and I can still love him and I can still see that he is always good. And so the, the second tab there is just to say, Pastor, I, I realize this is me. Now the second one is the course of action. I'm asking God to forgive me and I commit to pursuing him in my understanding and trust. The first step is to realize this is what happens. A few weeks ago I shared about uh, we were working on an old trailer and, and uh, we, were, we had scraped it and cleaned it all off and we wanted to repaint it and then ended up, and it's still there, a big puddle of paint in, in my grass um, and I got mad and I'm like, this always happens to me. Nothing ever goes right. There's paint all over my hands and I'm trying to use this electric painter that my dad let me borrow. And I thought, oh, this is going to be easy and nothing ever works right. You ever have that? I'm sure you probably don't. Everything works great for you. But for me, it doesn't. At, at the worst times, Lord, don't you know I have to be somewhere? Lord, don't you know I need, I got to have this? Lord, don't you understand? That's a condition of our heart. That's when we get in trouble and when we lash out with God and we're like, God, you aren't doing it my way. You have to admit that. But then we, we've got to fall on our faces and we got to humbly come before the the almighty God, our creator, and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I thought I was higher and mightier than you. I'm sorry that I thought I knew what's best for me. Or what I, what I thought was best for so-and-so. Jonah is saying, no, I know what those people deserve. Those people deserve to die. They deserve to be punished. They are cruel. And yet, God, you reached out to them and showed them mercy. That isn't right, God. Don't you know about your people? They're suffering and struggling. Aren't we your people, Israel? We must humble ourselves and ask God to forgive us. And we must to commit to continually pursuing him and trusting him. It isn't a one-time decision. It isn't a one-time deal. It is a continual day after day where we are working out our salvation and we see God in new ways. Not because he changes, but because we're limited. 
The, th the third there is the character of God, the fourth tab. The character of God that I'm struggling to move from my head to my heart is this. And I encourage you to be open and honest this morning. What are you struggling with with God? Would you put it there? Would you just claim it, throw it out, and say, this is it? This is what I'm struggling with. I, I want to encourage you, um, first of all, remember where we've been in Jonah and the fact that God knows all about you and he knows what's going on in your life. You can't run away from him. And so the longer you try to ignore what he's doing in you, the worse misery you will be in. And that's not because God wants you to experience that. God wants you to experience a closeness with him. But yet, as Christ followers, the word tells us that there are times that we are going to experience suffering and hardship. There's going to be times where we experience things that, that don't seem fair and don't seem right. And that's where we have to wrestle through. And where we have to come where the rubber meets the road in that saying of, do I really believe the character of God? Jonah knew who God was. But his heart, it didn't change his heart. And with us today, it isn't about keeping a list of rules. It's not about trying to do the right thing. It is walking with our creator God each day learning more about who he is and what he desires from each of us and how he has called us to live that out for him. Maybe you're sitting here today angry. Maybe you're disappointed. Maybe you're frustrated. Maybe you're doing your own thing and you're happy. Let me warn you, God won't leave you there long. Because he loves you. And he wants you to walk with him. May the mercy and grace of God become more and more real to us each and every day. That's what motivates us as we walk with him. And may the blindness of those around us and those who aren't walking with him. And when we see God working and providing in their lives, may we not become bitter or cold and callous, but may that encourage us all the more to be faithful to him because we serve a God who loves and desires for all to come to know him. The New Testament tells us that God is slow to anger. He is slow to come back right now because he is desiring that more would come to know him. That's an awesome God, isn't it? We serve and worship an awesome God. Would you pray with me? Lord, thank you for this morning. Thanks again for your word. Lord, I'm reminded of the song, Lord, I need you. Every hour I need you. And when I think I know enough of who you are, you humble me, Lord. You help me to realize that you are so big and so vast, so awesome. Yet you are so kind and gentle. You're patient. Your grace and your mercy far exceed even my own sin. Lord, may that be a motivation for each of us to continually walk with you and cry out to you, to get to know you more as we walk through your word, as we pray and spend time with you individually, but also here corporately. May we see you in new and exciting ways. And Lord, I want to pray for those who are sitting here or listening this morning who are wrestling 
who have experienced frustration or anger, who are just struggling with your plan and what you're doing in their lives and maybe the lives of those around them. And I pray, Lord, that your mercy and grace would overwhelm them and that they would sense and know that you know all about it and that they can trust you. Thanks for loving us, Lord. Thanks for giving your son, Jesus, that he would die for us, for all of our sin and all of our wrongdoing. He went to the cross, took our place, was buried in a tomb, and that three days later, he rose from the dead, and he conquered sin and death. And today, he offers us hope and relationship with you. That is our hope. We give you praise. We give you thanks that our hope is in the Lord. We love you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.